Hello, everyone. I'm Kristen Krupp. Currently, I spend most of my time acting. I like to think that I'm a person who really enjoys creativity and expression and wants to encourage that in other people. Kristen, you are gorgeous. You're stunning. Oh, you. And uh, you've been on a lot of world's sexiest lists. Um, <laughs> do you think that you're, you laugh at that? Why are you laughing at that? I know. I, think, I just find it funny. Yes, continue. <laughs> well, do you think that your cross ethnic makeup has something to do with it? I guess so. I mean, obviously it does because it's part of why I look the way I look. I don't know. It's hard for me to answer or something like that because I don't find myself sexy because I'm not. Why Why would it? That would be weird. Is it true that you weren't allowed to wear makeup until you were 16? Yeah, definitely true. My mom was very much protective of us, my sister and I. If we wore makeup, I think for her it would have made us more susceptible to attention that she didn't want us to have. Um, and also she didn't want us to grow up fast. So, also dating wasn't an okay thing until after 16, and I don't know, I think kids are exposed to a lot more a lot earlier. The internet opens up so much access. So in a good way, you're all connected globally, so we know what's going on all over the world, and we can actually connect with somebody on a personal level and find out what their day was like, which is really amazing. On the other hand, there's a lot of pornography and... Um, I think really destructive things for kids to see. Mm -hmm. And and I saw scary stalkers in the online chat room. Oh yeah, yeah. And mean. Like yeah, oh mean ooh. girls. Just online though, just brutally mean. Like people are just mean to each other. Going back to objectification, it's like because you can't see somebody and they're you're not quite human to you, people can just be so brutal to each other online. Do you think that shows like Small Mill or Gossip Girl really affects their behavior? I'm kind of unclear about whether it's the teens acting a certain way that generates the show because oh, okay. the show would appeal to the teens because they are behaving in that way or if it's the other way around or if it's more of a cycle which I think it's more of a cycle so the teens are wanting something like that they relate to it in some way therefore Gossip Girls is creative Gossip Girls goes on they like it but it also perpetuates the behavior right. so it goes in this like kind of vicious cycle what's your favorite place that you've traveled to Kind of a toss-up. The two that come out for me are definitely India and Nepal. And I went trekking in the Annapurna. I know. And like the Himalayas, and it's so beautiful. So oh. Nepal's a beautiful country because they're primarily Buddhist, so the people have a certain feel about them. If you go to Buddhist countries, they tend to be really Zen. warm. Yeah. Peaceful. And like, like really warm and lovely. And and not there wasn't a lot of begging. There was even though it's a very poor country. Mm -hmm. And it was a life changing experience for me. Personally. About India that drew you to that country? I like India so much because it's vibrant. Mm -hmm. There's so much life there. Mm -hmm. And there are so many religions and so many different types of people and looks and foods and tastes and spices and fabrics mm -hmm. and textures. It's just like a cacophony of sensorial input. And, and I love that about India. I like the people are so passionate there. They're very expressive. So when I'm there, like, everyone talks, they talk like me in a way, because I use my hands a yeah. lot, and they're super expressive. We were in Mumbai, and this is all pre, you know, slum dog time, so right. I didn't, and when I went to see the movie, I was reminded of my trip. Um, and on my birthday, we went into the red light district, mm -hmm. just to see what it's like. And it's in the middle of Mumbai, which is a huge city. Mm -hmm. I don't, you've never been, but, like, it's huge. It's like New York on crack. Oh my God. It's craziness. And then the slums surround the city, and there are slums within the city. Mm -hmm. And so we went to this red light district, and it's, it was like taxi cabs everywhere, and children, and women. And apparently a lot of them come in from Nepal. They're more fair than Nepali mm -hmm. women. And we just went in just to see what it was like and left. Um, and I was like blown away how in India there's this juxtaposition between rich and poor. And mm -hmm. it's everywhere. And they, like, you could go from your Taj five-star hotel, look out the window, and there's a slum. And, and the way that that coexists, I don't think that we here in North America can fully relate to that. Mm -hmm. And that was a really amazing experience for me. I love India. I really do. And then there's Bollywood. And my friend Rose and I, when we were uh -huh. prepping for this movie, I did partition. Uh -huh. We watched Bollywood movies all the time. Like, she sent me... Dead Bass, and um, I forget the name of the one with the cricket match. And they're all like three and a half hours long. They're like epic films. And they're so much fun. And even if you don't, if they don't translate it and it's in Hindi, you can still understand it because it's so extreme. But apparently in the movie theaters, and I didn't get to go, 
they like have full on like dance parties. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, did you pick up the dancing? No, I didn't. I wish I did, but we were in Ecuador, Rose and I and a couple uh -huh. of her girlfriends just recently, and we were in Quito over New Year's, and we ended up in the streets in Quito. They burn effigies. So that's the whole thing, to let go of all of the stuff from the old year. Mm -hmm. And we were in town, and we had our little effigy that we made, and we shoved it with our notes with the things we wanted to let go of uh -huh. and like put a little um, blue-footed booby in it because they're the, they're yeah, from, yeah. the Galapagos. <laughs> and we, someone gave us a stuffed animal, so we were like, we're going to let go of all of the people who have been noticing us from Smallville and not be annoyed by it anymore. So we shoved him in there too. And we went into town and we like went to this restaurant and it was an Indian restaurant and there was Bollywood music and everyone yeah, was right? dancing Bollywood style and Rose was like, yeah! <laughs> so like we're all there like dancing Bhangra with like yeah, big masks like... on in Quito, Ecuador. It was so crazy. crazy. Yeah. So, okay, let's say you're dancing in Ecuador. Yeah. You know, you guys are having the time of your life yeah. and a guy comes up to you. So, <laughs> do you do the back away? The, the back away's away? good. I like the back way. We should use That's that. That's the only move on that I know. Well, you know the light bulb. Yes, the it's light. all on the shoulders. I know. Because normally we go <laughs> hips, right? But it's yeah. all shoulders. <laughs> Growing up, did you learn Dutch or Chinese? No. So I, you guys are straight up. Yeah, we're like Canadiana. Canadian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like mixed and jumbled, but totally speaking English and, you know. <laughs> yeah. You were saying, mm. you know, it's not really the outside, but. What is it about the inside of a person that attracts mm. you? There's a joyfulness, playfulness, curiosity, an interest in life, an interest in learning, an interest in themselves, and an interest in growth. Um, and, a, and a person who's got a vision of the way they want themselves to be and the way they want the world to be, and they're willing to move toward it and push their boundaries and also be flexible in that journey. So you were very confident and very comfortable you know, saying what you like or what attracted you to people. Yeah. Um, how did you get that way? I mean, <laughs> I, you're I you're so young. <laughs> you know, I think that it's in the last chunk of my life I I really looked at what's important to me. What's important to me about living? What's important to me about where I want to go? Mm -hmm. And although I'm only 26 years old, there's a lot that I want to do and I have such a great opportunity because I've realized things at a certain age I can build myself so that I can do more of those things mm -hmm. in my life. So I think people start to figure it out a little later generally. Like, and then you don't have as much time where you have these commitments and you have a child and you have a family and you can't just go book it and take off. Yeah. And I can, yeah. which is great. You know, going back to your work with UNICEF, Greenpeace, and Red Cross, is there any particular organization or nonprofit that is dear to your heart? You know, I have kind of stepped away from that world and I've been evaluating what organizations really look at cause and really look at sustainability. And I'm realizing that um, there's an organization called the Aga Khan Foundation, mm -hmm. which is, you know, the Aga Khan heads it. I don't know, do you know about it? I don't. Um, so it's a Muslim sect, he, he's the leader yeah. of it, and mm -hmm. they're known very much for their um, philanthropy, the entire group. So yeah. he runs this organization and they're incredible. Their projects are really amazing. And they work in sustainability and they've really implemented a lot of the microfinance programming. Mm -hmm. And they also, also which is, I think, I think it's brilliant. I think mm -hmm. microfinance is brilliant. And yeah. also they do this roadside schooling for girls because girls are the last people to get education in most areas mm -hmm. of the world. And so they put up these roadside schools where you can just go as a girl, get some schooling at the end of your day and go back home. So I watched a couple of videos online <laughs> of... Uh, Girls by Design. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about Girls by Design? Girls by Design is a company that I started with my friend Kendra Voth, and it's a content creation, well it will be, a content creation and social networking site for teen girls to build self-esteem. So right now it's got mostly goofy videos uh -huh. and a blog, and our newsletter is now pretty much entirely produced by the teenagers that we chose for our board of directors. So I've almost washed my hands of that completely, and I just write a little bit. And I love it because they, they just take the reins. Okay, so this is a little rapid fire. What kind of music do you listen to? I listen to all types of music, minus, you know, I don't really do the country thing or the, like, heavy metal thing. What's your favorite album of all time? You know what? The first thing that popped into my head, this is funny, is Sarah McLaughlin's Stumbling Towards Ecstasy. What Canadian band do you think the rest of the world needs to know about? Hmm. Honestly, I don't know very many Canadian bands. What is your favorite cuisine? Ooh, Japanese. Japanese, really? Yeah. Not Indian? No, no, not Indian. I like Thai a lot, but Indian I have allergic reactions to. So. Oh. so what would be the ultimate goal in life for you? Joyfulness. 
just like joyfulness and I look back when I die I'm like okay I, I, I left more than I than I than was there well thank you so much Kristen for talking with us and it's great to get your view your interview <laughs> so um, very much appreciated thank, thank you, you.